So I've been using FL Studio for around about four years now, and they're constantly releasing new versions, new functionality, and new features, and making the product better than ever. It's got me thinking about when I first started using FL Studio and being overwhelmed by the amount that it can do. So I wanted to make this video for new producers, people that have been using FL for a little while. This is my top five tips that I wish I knew when I first started out. So let's jump into FL now and we'll talk through what these tips are. Okay, so if you're new to FL Studio, this is probably what FL Studio looks to you when you first open it up. It's completely blank, there's nothing there, and chances are in your channel rack, you will have something that looks like this. Kick, clap, hi-hat, and snare. Now, for me, making lo-fi, chill hop, kind of ambient beats, this is all totally useless. When I was first starting out, you know, the first couple of days in FL Studio, this was great because it taught me about the channel rack and using the sequencer. As soon as you kind of get into making your style, you want to be adding your own sounds to this. So the first tip I'm going to talk about here is templates. Now I have a whole dedicated video to this. I think it's one of the most useful things on FL Studio. I imagine every single door can do something like this. So even if you're not an FL user, you can create your own template. So whatever you find you're doing all the time, you can save that as a template. You can put your favorite instruments in here. You can start with absolutely nothing. You can arrange your playlist so that you have different tracks laid out for whatever it is that you want in your template. On top of that, you can actually set FL to open with your template automatically. Because what I found was happening is I'm opening up FL, I'm having to go file, open, choose my template. So instead of doing that, if you go file and new from template, you see at the bottom here, there's an option for change default template. And if you click on that, you'll get into the settings of FL Studio. You scroll right down to the bottom, you can see here you've got the default template and then you've got the startup project. So you can set your default template to be whatever you want it to be. If there's a standard one if in FL that you like, you can set that here using the same drop down as the normal menu. Or if you create your own one, you can add that there as the template. And then you can tell FL to start up with that template. So you can say use the default template. You can say load up completely blank template, or you can set FL to always open the last used project. I don't personally use that, but I imagine that could be helpful if you're spending quite a long time on the one project. So that's the first tip. It took me a while to set up my own template, but like I say, I've got a whole video on how I set my template up and a breakdown of the whole process. So if you are interested in templates, absolutely go and check that one out. Now, the second tip that I'm gonna talk about is something that really helps me as somebody who doesn't have a ton of music theory knowledge. Now that is the ability for FL Studio to help you with scales and chords and things that maybe you're not 100% sure of if you're not super fluent in music theory. So if you open up your piano roll, now I used to use this stamp button. If you click on this, you get an option here to A, choose a scale. So you can go, let's say I want a major scale, I can click that. And then if I want the major scale of any note, I can click on it in here. So let's say I want an F major, you can click there and there's all of the notes for the F major. Now what you can do is load that into your sampler. And if you have ghost notes on, you can see them in the background. I just need to use these notes and you know that it'll be in scale. That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is to use this feature here. This is called snap to scale. So if you right click on it, it allows you to choose a root note and a scale. So I can say I want to write in a C major and then I can click snap to scale. And if I click on that and it turns green, that means it's activated. And now no matter what I do, if I drag a note around, it will snap into that scale. So you can see here we're in a C major. So it's not allowing me to put any notes on notes outside of that scale. And if you right click and then you change to let's say a D major, you can then drag through the D major. And that's really helpful if you're not super fluent in different scales when you're finished with it, or if you wanna go outside of a scale, you can just click and turn it off, and then you can drag on every note again. 
super helpful and would have saved me so much time and headache when I was first starting out. The next tip I want to talk about is something that comes really in handy if you're playing on a MIDI keyboard or let's say keying in some drums for the sake of the video i'm just going to use my keyboard here so i'm just going to select this piano sound and then just to show you i'm just going to kind of play around on the piano a little bit so that didn't particularly sound great but just for the point of the video Let's say you were doing that and you wrote something that you really liked, but you weren't recording. FL Studio is always recording you if you're playing in MIDI. Let's say I just played something there that I really liked. I haven't recorded it and now I can't remember what I was playing. If I come up here to Tools and then go down to Dump Score Log to Selected Pattern, I can say, oh, I know I was playing for the last two minutes, five minutes, up to 30 minutes, and you can just dump everything that FL Studio recorded into your piano roll. I can say, I know I like those last few chords I played, let's get rid of everything else. And then I can drag those in and there it is. I've got the chords that I played. So it's always recording you. And that's super handy if you're someone that can play piano, it works if you're messing around like playing drums. Let's say you've got a loop set up and you're just playing around with the drums and you play something you really like and then you can't quite remember what you did you can just dump it back in. FL Studio will remember, it's always recording you. It can save you a ton of headache and a ton of time. Really handy little feature there. The next thing is something that's not necessarily related to using an instrument, but it's something that I did a little while ago that just helps me to be organized. And if you've got a ton of different sample packs, a ton of different drum packs, let's say you've got a ton of different stuff that you load into a whole studio you can actually organize those i open up the mixer and i come up here and i open this up i've got all of my things organized so i've got my dynamics i've got my filters I've got my flanges fx's and i set all these up myself and then everything that i don't use i have in this unused category over here and so you can organize things that you want to use into their own categories if you come over to plugin database on the left hand side right click it and then click open it's going to open the file explorer on your computer and you can then go in and you can say oh this is something that i don't use i'm going to stick that in the unused category you know valhalla supermassive that's actually a reverb plugin so let's stick that in my delay and reverb folder and then just by making that move you'll see up here I've got Valhalla Supermassive in my reverb folder. And so you can organize it to be as simple, as complex, as tidy as you like it to be. And you can, you can do that with your samples as well. So you see over here, I've got one folder that I call producing, put a number one in front of it. So it's at the top here. And if I open that up, I've got drum packs, I've got sample packs, and I've got stock FL packs. So if I right click that and go to open, in here, I've got all of my samples organized in the way that I find useful. So I know that I've got all my drum packs here and then I've split out packs. So I've got samples and drums separately. I don't tend to use samples as much as I use drum sounds. I just separated them out so I didn't have to scroll through or look through things that I wasn't using all the time. And then I've got the stock FL instruments and drums at the bottom here, just in case I fancy going back to those. And that's just something that can really help you with being organized. I know that when I'm writing music, I can just come in here, I can go to my one producing folder and find everything that I need. Probably a lot of people might do this already, but you know, you can really organize it to your needs. And that's just gonna help you with time and being way more efficient when you're writing music. The final thing and probably my favorite thing in FL Studio is learning all the different shortcuts that you can do. Things that are just gonna save you a ton of time and really help you out. You can use Control A, that's gonna select everything in the pattern. Got everything selected here, you can use Control B. And what that does is it will duplicate this exact pattern in the next section of the pattern. So I've got two bars selected, it's gonna put them in the next two bars. If I had four bars selected, it would put them in the next four bars. So for example, I used it there once just to get four bars. If I control A and select all of those again, you can use it again to build out eight bars. Alt and R, 
that brings up the randomizer and you can use this to get some different velocities you can use it to change your panning on an instrument super helpful but if you do turn on the pattern section you can also get some really interesting randomizers on the actual pattern you can kind of create art sounds things like that another really helpful shortcut here is alt and s that's the strum tool and you can use that for essentially strumming whatever pattern you've got in if you've written some chords if you've got like a guitar line strum those chords to give you a bit more of a human feel and something that will save you a ton of time and finally i think the the one that i find the most useful is control l and that is the quick legato and what that does is essentially it takes every note and it extends it up to the next note so if your notes are too long let's say i'm writing in like a bass line i write it like this but then I have a gap at the end here what it will do is it will chop these ones so that they don't overlap and it will extend this one as far as the next one so if I do that now control and L and that's a really nice way to just save you a little bit of time it's absolutely worth learning shortcuts they're going to save you so much time and just be really handy increase your workflows and just speed up your process okay so I mean that's pretty much it it's um these are just a few things that I wish I knew when I first started using FL Studio. I know this video is a little different to my normal stuff, but people have asked me a few times about what shortcut am I using there, like asking me about my template. I just wanted to make this quick video to talk to you guys about things that I wish I knew when I was first starting. I mean, hopefully you found this helpful. It's always a good reminder for me. I've kind of reminded myself thinking about this video of some of the stuff that maybe I don't do as often or some of the features that I don't use as often these days. But yeah, I hope you found this helpful and hopefully this will help some of you guys too. Back to the normal scheduling next week, I'll be making some beats and you guys can come along for the ride. Peace out.